a little bit about the confidence that the team is clearly showing in, in this iteration of Brett Maurer. Yeah, that's, you know, he's making the kicks, so the confidence grows every kick he made. And I think he had a 53-yarder, a 45-yarder, then a couple shorter ones. And I think he's made all kicks over 50 except the, the bomb at the end of the half we, we missed just a couple weeks ago. So he's locked in. Snaps are good, holds are good, and he gets great work days on Thursday and Friday. So I think his process throughout the week has been great. So ton of confidence in Brett, man. Wasn't sure, Michael Gelfi, Dallas Moranis. Wasn't sure when we would see your kickoff team cover one, but it finally happened there in the fourth quarter. Yeah. What did it say about that group that it didn't fall into a lull of it just being touchback after touchback after yeah. touchback, and it was ready with the paint making that happen? Yeah, that's a, I mean, great. Michael, it's like you're in our meeting room. And that's kind of like the coach is like, hey, guys, I know we had the track meet out there and we're not getting any action. But at some point, this ball is going to come up a little short or they're going to take one out a couple of yards deep, which there's a couple only a couple of yards deep. And so my um, coaching has been, come on, guys, keep your foot on the gas because, you know, and I'm sure the players sometimes think, oh, there's another one. But the one that came out was no different than any other one. So it was great to see our guys go because when the ball came out, we had some real action. So it was great to see some kickoff work because we hadn't had it yet. And I think we could be really good on kickoff. And you see what, you know, a gift did to his blocker, what Hendershot did to make the tackle, Sam Williams versus double team, uh, Rico on the backside with Kelvin and CJ. It was a good intro to us for kickoff cover, especially the rookies who was, that was their first time ever covering a kick in the NFL. The way that you guys have just kind of just kicked it for touchbacks thus far, is that a reflection of the confidence in this defense to just, OK, we'll start at 25 and we'll take our chances with them? Is that, is that part of the thinking? Um, I think it's letting Brett just swing without having to, you know, we haven't asked him to crush it. We haven't asked him to lighten up on it. I think part of, I kind of go back to even last year, just letting the kicker on kickoff just kick, you know, because I think there might be a little bit of carryover one way or the other to his field goals. So instead of asking him to do too much on kickoff, just kick it. If it comes up a little short, we'll cover it. If it goes deep, we'll take the touch back. Um, there is merit to putting balls in play for our defense because we tackle them on the 17 or 18 yard line. So in theory, you could make a case that covering kickoffs are, are good because it's hard to get to the ball sometimes. The 25 yard line, returning the kickoff that you're catching on the goal line. Um, I said too many words. But um, it was good to see us get one. Jory. Oh, Jory, I'm standing out this What's the teaching point on the blocked extra point? Yeah, that was a very simple teaching point. Um, it was, you know, our young, our young rookie, he just got to get his outside arm up. And we saw 97 in there. He hadn't been in the C gap in the previous couple weeks. It was kind of a new body for us. And when we saw him go left against Terrence, there was a little leakage. So we got him on the sideline and just said, just remember, get your outside arm up, get your outside arm up. Then we went on a long drive and hit the PAT, and we didn't get our outside arm up. So, you know, I'll tell him in a couple of days, I said, happen on a PAT, which we don't want early in the season. Let's just make sure that if we don't do what we're supposed to do, this could happen. And it could be a more critical kick. So we'll bite the bullet and hopefully learn our lesson on that one that it's just a technique thing we got to tighten up. Good question. John. Uh, John show The Athletic. When did you uh, start seeing that maybe Calvin Joseph could be kind of a weapon as a gunner on the outside, and uh, how, how do you think he's done recently? Yeah, that's a good one. I don't know if there was a time last year, because he missed a lot of camp with the hamstring and missed the first, I think, four or five games. And when we got him back, there was a need. And so let's go, Kelvin. You know, and he's obviously got fantastic physical tools. A big part of it is the willingness. And right off the bat, you know, he's a football player. and. Of course, he wants to be playing more defense, but I'm proud of him for taking his role, which is very valuable. He plays all four phases and making the most of it. Um, so very early on when we got him out there in the first couple of games he played, you could see that he could run plenty good enough as a gunner and tackle. Uh, he's outstanding as a corner on punt return. And then we said, let's put him at a five on kickoff and on some frontline KOR, which he's never done in his, in his life, especially in college. And he excelled in that too. So. He's been really good for us. He had two tackles in the past game. And he's good in the meeting room. He's very quiet. Sometimes you show up on game day, and it's like, you know, I hope Kelvin's ready. And I say that every week. And he's always been ready every week. So, 
any fears I've had of being ready has been diminished because every week he seems like he's ready to go and he plays hard and he plays well. That 22 yard final course isn't characteristic for Brian. Was there next chance he got? He fielded a little snap, pinned him at the 11 yard line. Yep. How impressed were you, were you with the response of him just moving, moving forward after that? Yeah, it was great. I mean, he was, he was distraught after the, the shank, basically, because it's the first one that I ever remember, and I think he said he's ever had. And I told him in the meeting in front of the guys, I said, I said Brian, you get one every 11 years. <laughs> and you just used it, so we won't see another one for another 11 years, and you'll be fine. You know, on the sideline, don't try to make up for it on the next punt. You know, don't try to hit a 70-yarder to, to equal it out. Just, just punt your game, and things always work out, kind of like last year. So make consistencies early, then he really got hot. And I said, we're about where we were last year, so we're all right. Um, and then um, on the last one, just a low snap, great sky ball kick. Got him inside the 10, I think, on the last two punts. So it's always great to see a, a kicker miss it and then rebound with a few makes. A punter miss it and rebound with some critical end of the game stuff. Um, so yeah, we'll be all right. Skyler Dixon with the AP. Did Brett save two points on that block, or was somebody else going to get there? No, Brett saved two. Yeah, he made a really a genius play is because he could have gone a dough for the ball, but it probably would have been booted around and a faster guy might have picked it up. So he really waited for the guy to pick it up, then tackle him, which I've never taught. <laughs> it's just an instinctive play, and he knew, and he rehearsed it to me and said, I just wanted to wait for him to pick the ball up and tackle him instead of trying to dive on a loose ball and boot it around where they had a couple other guys maybe waiting for it. So um, that's not something we've practiced, but a good play. Uh, Babe Lofberg, Cowboys Um in, in your experience, you know, there's very few Sebastian Janikowski's drafted in the first round, kicked to the same team for 15 years, whatever. But with, with Brett Maher, um, you know, these guys bounce around, and suddenly they, they find it, and they may find it a year in, two years in. Slide, probably a good example. Yeah. Yesterday, kicked yeah. three teams. Yep. So what, what has your experience been when a guy sort of finds it, like, Brett has been really consistent. Yeah. Sure, obviously, you know, he was 12-14 last year in New Orleans, all that stuff. Yeah. What, what's been your experience that a guy suddenly, I don't want to say get to, but. Yeah. Um, gosh, it's a great question, and I don't know if I have a great answer. I coached Janikowski for four years, and there was a couple of times that he lost it and very quickly got it back. Same thing with Zerline. You know, there's been quite a few times he lost it and got it back. Um, I don't know if Brett ever lost it because I don't I haven't experienced him in the past. But um, all I can speak on is right now is that I feel like he's really confident, and that he's never um, lacked confidence in his whole career. I think he loves you know our snap and our hold operation. And I think that gives him a lot of confidence. Um, and then being here in Dallas the first time, I think really helps him come back and understand some of the expectations and. There's a maybe a piece to him that says, okay, I'm going to go out and I'm going to kick. I'm not going to really worry about too much. And that could be part of it too. So I don't have a good answer, you know, how a guy might find it other than the confidence he has in, his, in himself or his teammates operation or just saying, to be honest with you, this might be my last chance to hell with it. I'm swinging at every kick. And sometimes that's also a good thing too. I'm not worried about, not worried about getting cut anymore because that's already been done. So. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good one. When he was here the first time, his kicks were solid. Yeah. He wasn't balls, you know, you see guys spraying, obviously. I mean, he was missing by a foot. Yeah. Did, did you go back and look at all his kicks from here? Yep. When, when first time around? Yep. What was your thought? Uh, I think. In, order, in, in other words, what yeah. was your thoughts? Hey, let's, let's get this guy in here. Yeah. My thoughts getting him in here was based off of the workouts we had in training camp and even last fall. Well, last fall, I felt that when we brought him in, we brought him in with Lirum, and we kept Lirum over Brett. Um, just because Lirum, Brett was still, I think, gaining some confidence back, whether whatever it was with the previous injury and stuff like that. And then we brought him in this training camp. It was a really a new Brett compared to my experience with him the previous fall during that midseason tryout. And you could tell that whatever it was, whether he was healthy or he just had some more time to train on his own, he was uh, much more confident in the tryout the previous fall. There was a little bit of 
you could tell maybe a little nervousness with him, but this past training camp there was none of that. So it was really cool to see him where he came from last fall to this training camp to be able to say, yeah, this is this guy's ready to go and we need him. I wanted to ask you about um, Turpin's two uh, punt return chances, I suppose you yeah. call them in the first quarter. Um, the first, is poison the word that you guys yep. use as a scatter? And what is that a rookie mistake of just not getting out of the way? And it didn't cost you this time, but it could, it could happen again? Yeah, no, it's good you probably saw it on film. The, he made the right decision to not feel it because it bounced at about the four. But he was still in range of the ball bouncing back and hitting him, which I think is what you're alluding to, Michael. Yeah. So I talked to him on the sideline about it. You have a couple options is to throw a fair catch up, even though you're not going to fair catch it, but you've got to run away from it to get away from the ball and maybe to pull the cover away from you. Or don't fair catch it. That way you can still block any of their cover guys, but still getting away from the football. And you can see that it went over his head. And he put his hands on his head like, oh, shucks. It wasn't a touchback more so than I made a mistake. But he's got to get away from the football because it's still live. And um, my experience with returners, too, and I kept talking to him like I did Brian, is you're not getting opportunities, but don't force an opportunity. And definitely returners sometimes have that in them when that's kind of their role is I'm not getting one. It's touchback. It's great high directional punts. I got a fair catch. You know, I got to do something in this game. So. A lot of times that leads to poor decisions. And he didn't do that, but I had to keep telling him during the game, just if it comes to you, take it. If not, be patient, be patient. Um, but rookie mistake, yeah, I just got to get away from a live ball that's bouncing around the goal line. And that leads to the second one, the minus three return that he followed. Pretty clear he's trying to make something happen. Yep. Are you OK with that? Or is he trying to make something happen when it's not there? Or if he's just a playmaker and if he thinks he can make something happen, he, you let him be instinctive and go. Yeah, I think that's what I was alluding to. He was getting to the point where, you know, I want to I want to try to make something happen for the team, which I respect incredibly because it's a competitive nature in him. And I think last week we gave him a ton of, man, that was a great tough catch in traffic. You got us 20, 25 yards. You got us in field goal range. So great job. And I can't turn around on that one and say, man, you should have fair caught that because the Giants one, I was thinking, you probably should have fair caught that one. So I don't want to be a hypocrite. So I understand what he was thinking. This is, this is a rerun of last week. I can make this catch, make this first guy miss, and get his 20 yards. Um, and he kind of bobbled it, which put him kind of off timing. So it's, it's an interesting one from a coach's perspective. You know, one time you say, yeah, great work. And the next time you say, oh, you should have fair caught it. But it's kind of the same deal. So um, I really trust him to make the decision that he thinks is right. And always, as a coach, just said, I got to live with those decisions they make when I trust them to do that, because it's, it's tough, man. The kickers that you've been around, are they all wired a little bit differently in terms of just their mental approach to their craft? And how have, have you been around Maher now? How have you seen how he's wired? Yeah, I have really experienced in my coaching career four major kickers. When I was an assistant with the Ravens, it was Matt Stover. And then I went to Janikowski, and then Zerline and Brett. And it's, I'm just coming off the top of my head. But your question, all four guys are so different. You know, and I could go into depth of each one. You know, kicking style, personality, um, the stress they carry. Some of it's very heavy. Some of it's like, whatever. You know, you could probably guess which ones are which. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're all really different. They're all really different. It's cool to reflect, just sitting here thinking, you know, live on all the four different personalities and kicking styles. And me learning from each one of them. Um, I've learned way more from the kickers than I've coached the kickers. I've always said that just because they know, you know, they're all, they're all different. It's, I'm, I'm mumbling, bumbling. But it's, it's a great reflection question for me to think back you know, for three years with Stover and four years for Janikowski and a lot of years with Zerline and, and now Brett. And he has his own great different style. Um, and I love the different personalities and the different styles because I'm maybe kind of the same way. I don't, I don't have one way to teach things or one personality that I show up in the building with every day, other than hopefully consistency. <laughs> how, is, uh, how is he wired, Mother? Very mature and poised. And there's something about him where it's a little bit of the, you know, 
if I miss one, it's, you know, I'm good, I'm back. You know, there's not a big dwell on it factor, which I don't know how he was before, but right now it just feels like he's a very mature, confident, poised guy. You know, we, we put him on um, practice squad the first couple of weeks, knowing he was going to be elevated, and it was like, doesn't matter. I got to make my kicks either way, you know. So he just had a great um, sense of maturity about him. It's cool. Okay. Thanks, sir. All right. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. See ya.